Hello and welcome to Pedestrian Bridge Design. This is a very brief three-part series. Uh, my name is Matt Yarold and I'm an assistant professor at Texas A&M University. Quickly a little background on myself. Uh, started my career at Lehigh University, received my bachelor's and master's degree in 2005. Uh, after that, I uh, started work at an engineering consulting firm called Almond and Whitney. I was there for about five years, uh, mostly working on a bridge design related projects. Um, Around 2009, I started part-time and then went full-time for my doctorate at Drexel University. Um, and then when I graduated there, I went uh, back to academia and uh, worked as assistant professor for Tennessee Tech for four years. And then uh, in 2017, uh, accepted a position uh, again as assistant professor at Texas A&M in the civil engineering department. So that's just uh, give you a little bit of background um, and understanding of where this uh, material is coming from. Uh, all total, I have roughly 15 years of bridge-related research and uh, practical design experience. So one of the main uh, learning objectives uh, for this uh, three-part series, um, it's going to be more high-level, big picture, and uh, the first thing you really need to come out of it with uh, the ability to explain the overall process to go from just a blank canvas project site all the way through to an operating uh, facility. Uh, you should be able to define the general roles of an owner, uh, architect and engineer, along with being able to lay out a pedestrian bridge for a given site um, and understand kind of the, the driving factors for doing that task. Um, you should also be able to list the main design tasks uh, for a, a pedestrian bridge, as well as uh, list the primary demands or, or, or loading uh, that we need to account for for a pedestrian bridge. And then finally, uh, tie it all together, you should be able to create a preliminary design for a pedestrian bridge from this three-part series in uh, combination with your basic undergraduate courses like steel design, uh, concrete design, and so on. So this officially is part one of the series. Um, just again, starting off now, big picture of the overall process for a pedestrian bridge. And this is greatly simplified, but um, just to kind of illustrate how this all um, happens, it all starts with an owner identifying some need. So, um, Typically you have, you know, the, the owner wants to get people from point A to point B and there's some obstacle in between. So it's either a waterway, a rail line, a highway, um, but the owner identifies this as a problem and then hence a, a bridge is needed. Um, for pedestrian bridges, not all, not all the time, but in many cases an architect's involved. So uh, they will be in charge of uh, basically the overall concept of the facility, uh, the general layout, um, a lot of the, uh, big picture details, the way the, the, the system will function, the way the user will experience it. Um, in highway bridges, as an aside, there's rarely an architect involved, um, uh, as opposed to the complete opposite where in building uh, design, you know, the architect sort of leads the way. Um, here, it's kind of a blend with pedestrian bridges, so it, it's case by case, but you'll see as the case study we go through, the ar an architect was involved um, in, in the project. Um, the next, uh, person we're talking about here would be the engineer and there's you know multiple people, but the engineer would really be in charge of doing all the design calculations to, um, you know, to, to ensure safety, serviceability and so on of the facility. Um, and then all the different design calculations are then used to develop the, uh, the, real, the real product of the engineer, which is the actual uh, plans, along with the uh, specifications, the more detailed um, information. Um, and then uh, overall cost estimate, which is used by the owner um, for budgeting purposes. And then the last, uh, you know, uh, player in this whole thing is, of course, the contractor who will then build the entire facility. So as I alluded to earlier, I'm going to illustrate uh, pedestrian bridge design through a case study, and it's called the Rhode Island Avenue Pedestrian Bridge, the project that I worked on a number of years ago, actually, when I was with the Almond and Whitney. It's uh, located in Washington, D.C., which you see the location map there. Um, and it was uh, the project we had, the contract was through DDOT, which is Washington, D.C. Department of Transportation. There were a lot of uh, agencies involved. And I'll doing a little uh, blow up here. You can see it's actually uh, northeast of sort of downtown Washington, D.C. You can see some, um, I guess, landmarks there. Um, you can see the Pentagon here, uh, just for frame of reference. And uh, you see, uh, for example, the uh, Howard University, but our project site up what's called the Red Line, uh, which you know, um, this extension travels, uh, you're traveling into the city northeast, and there's a, 
a metro station that is called Rhode Island Avenue Metro Station. Okay, so starting off, like I said, the owner has some sort of need, so there's some overall objective. And this is a bird's eye view of uh, the, the eventual project site back maybe of 2000, 2003 ish, somewhere in that time frame. The uh, facility right here, you can see the, the awning. This is the metro station, okay? Uh, that's the Rhode Island Ever Metro Station. The uh, rail lines here are owned by uh, CSX. And um, the uh, road underneath is actually Rhode Island Avenue. Okay, so you see all the main landmarks here. In the lower left portion of this uh, photo is where I want to draw your attention. That region of the area was um, experiencing a large increase in development. So a lot of people coming to the area and living in this side uh, of town, as well as you could sort of see a path already forming, but I'll draw a line right here. There was... Uh, um, a, it's called a Metro Branch Trail. It was a mixed use kind of jogging, uh, walking bicycle, um, kind of a rails to trails project that was, under, that was in the planning stages at this time. So they knew there was gonna be a lot of more pedestrians on sort of the, uh, the lower side here of the tracks. And uh, they knew that they already were experiencing issues where they're having people trying to cross uh, the uh, CSX tracks and make their way back and forth uh, to the, met uh, to the uh, Metro the uh, rail lines. So that's where this all sorted, uh, uh, sort of began. The photo, when we actually went and toured the site years ago, you can see it's just a regular flow of people that were walking um, across the, uh, what eventually this will be the, the trail. And then you have, uh, here's the CSX rail lines. And then of course up here is the uh, Metro station. So this is kind of the, the driver of the whole thing. And the owner realized this was only going to be increasing in terms of a problem and um, wanted to address it with a uh, pedestrian bridge. So the first contract that the owner let was for an architect. And um, this isn't always the case. Sometimes the owner will have a joint, it'll be, you know, an architect and engineer kind of paired together throughout the project. Here they did it in sequence. So first contract was for an architect. And then later you'll see, I was obviously part of the engineering contract that went out. But in around 2004, uh, an architect came up with a number of concepts. So you can see here's just some hand drawings. Um, on the left-hand side here, again, you could see this is the existing metro station. And you can see their, their estimate in, in um, uh, yellow there. You could see the pedestrian trail right, right here. And here's the concept. So they have a ramp system shown here. And then you have a, a pretty decent-sized bridge that crosses over the, uh, this is the CSX rail line right here, okay? Um, and I'll give you some other drawings that the uh, article, article uh, excuse me, the architect came up with. Here's an aerial view of that. So again, at the top, you see the, uh, the Metro station, and then you see again, that Metro branch trail here, and being able to get people, you know, to and from with this, the main centerpiece, of course, is a bridge. They looked at a number of structural forms. Uh, this, this thing, I think what's shown here is actually a cable stay. Uh, they had an arch, truss, girder system, a um, number of uh, concepts that the architect worked up for the owner, um, along with a number of different ramp configurations to, to get up onto the bridge. So here's again, just giving some detailed drawings again by the architect in the early stages, you could see sort of the ramp to the, in this portion here that uh, the architect worked up. And then here's just the conventional uh, truss, which is shown on the right. What the uh, owner ended up selecting was kind of this, uh, it's a truss system with a variable uh, depth. So you have this curved um, upper cord and, uh, you know, the owner uh, decided to go with this concept and um, proceeded then uh, a few years later to then let the contract uh, out for uh, engineering services, which uh, my company was a part of. But this concludes the first part of the uh, pedestrian bridge um, series. And uh, we will um, pick back up uh, in the next video. Thank you very much.